Hello, I'm Dewan Galloway with AtlantaPost.com, and today I'm joined by the founder and the CEO of Tempo Networks, Mr. Frederick Morton. How are you doing? It's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you for joining us. And before we get into the story of Tempo, I kind of want to take you back and want you to talk to me a little bit about how um, you evolved into an entrepreneurship. I know you wore uh, a hat as a clerk judge as well as some other professions. Where were you before entrepreneurship? Well, immediately before entrepreneurship, I was at MTV Networks. Uh, prior to that, I was at Viacom Legal. Mm -hmm. uh, Viacom, as you know, is the corporate parent to MTV, sure. Paramount, et cetera, et cetera, CBS. Before that, I was at a major New York law firm, which is Simpson Thatcher. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm legally trained. The, the heart of your question is, is why entrepreneurship? I think I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I think I was born an entrepreneur. So my parents, uh, I grew up in, in a mom and pop grocery store that developed into you know, a number of businesses. So I've always seen entrepreneurship from a little boy coming up. Of course. And so it was only natural that after a, a certain amount of training mm -hmm. in corporate America that you know, it was in my heart to sort of bring forth my own business. Sure, so having seen the influence of entrepreneurship in your life and of course working at Viacom, getting that professional development, Correct. Uh, why the creation of Tempo? So my whole scene is about creativity. Uh, you know, when, you know, coming up as a kid, it was music, it was dance, it was theater, it was everything creative. Mm -hmm. uh, but good, solid Caribbean parents that believe in education. So, you know, it was, you better go do something that's going to sort of put something on, on, the, on the plate. Um, and I'm glad that I did because I went ahead and sort of got my law degree and did my master's and all that kind of uh, traditional work. And Tempo has a story that dates back to um, being a subsidiary of MTV. Yeah. Talk to me about how you brought that idea to them and how it was born. Mm -hmm. So while I was at MTV, it, it dawned on me that, you know, I might be here for a particular reason. And that is, I'm from this extraordinary culture called the Caribbean culture, right? You know, music, dance, food, just makes people feel good about who they are, you know? Mm -hmm. And I felt that it was ready made for television, you know, and I was in the middle of television, seeing it all around me, but not really seeing the Caribbean represented in, in, in the full splendor that it is. And um, I was fortunate enough to have as my mentor, uh, one of the founders of MTV, um, or at least right there at the beginning, and that's Tom Freston. Right. Uh, so if you know, I want my MTV, that campaign, that was his. Of course. Right, <laughs> okay. So he was then the uh, president and CEO of MTV Networks and was my mentor at the organization. So one day I just came in um, and I said to Tom, you know, Tom, I got this idea, you know. And, um, you know, I said, I, I feel like the Caribbean's culture is so profound, it's so inviting, 40 million tourists every year. They don't come for just the sand, the sun, and the beach, but they love being in the Caribbean. The culture. The culture, right. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the best set on the earth, you know what I mean? <laughs> we don't have to build it, it's sure, right there. Sure. Um, so I said, you know, why not a Caribbean channel that sort of unites the region, brings the French, Spanish, uh, you know, English speaking, you know, uh, uh, Dutch speaking, Caribbean together under this umbrella of Caribbeanness. Um, and he sort of looked at me and he said, you know what, that's an interesting idea, um, but you're going to have to run it to the organization. I didn't exactly know what that meant at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, if I did, I would have braced myself. Um, but, um, you know, it was the first words of, of advice and going forward. And I took it, ran with it two years later, you know, on February 14th of 2005, Valentine's Day, I won't forget, mm -hmm. got the green light and Tempo was born. Awesome. And you later took Tempo private from MTV. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk to me about that process <laughs> of negotiation. Uh, extremely, yeah, extremely challenging. But, you know, as, as anything that's worth it, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be challenging. Sure. All right. Um, and if you get it without a challenge, it will disappear from you, most likely. Sure. So the challenge is an important part of the process. Of course. But, but, but it is the right word. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of never been done uh, at MTV where, you know, you sort of give birth, birth to a concept. It is ultimately launched. Um, and then you are able to sort of, uh, sort of reclaim the child. Um, and um, so after two years of, of um, being under the MTV umbrella, uh, it became clear to me that in order to fully sort of flourish, the channel needed to sort of have a certain degree of independence. Of course. Um, uh, I received incredible training at MTV Networks, mm -hmm. and, um, and there was a lot of support. Um, however, the, the company had a million priorities, right? Uh, none of which was necessarily the launch of a channel. 
mm -hmm. uh, because at that time, launching any digital channel was not necessarily in the, in what Wall Street was demanding. It was demanding something completely different. My only priority was Temple. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me a while mm -hmm. uh, to sort of get the concept, uh, you know, sort of ingrained. And the brand is now a household name throughout the Caribbean. Wow. Yeah, because again, the, the, the focus was really on that, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so no matter where you are, from the Bahamas to Trinidad, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Dominica, Antigua, Jamaica, it doesn't matter. Temple is, is, is now at the top of the, uh, of the list. Has being in the realm of new media taught you anything about programming in terms of what you put on the station? Yeah, I mean, I, I, the, it's interesting because it's, you know, you have the station is, is, is which one comes first, the station or the new media at this mm -hmm. point? So you gotta, you gotta kind of figure it out. Um, but at the end of the day, television uh, is still television, mm -hmm. you know, that's where it's what captures most of the eyeballs, et cetera. And if you do a good job on presenting something that folks like on television and that sparks something, um, not just a little spark, but in the heart, because that's what we're going after. We're just trying to reach people. Sure. If you do a good job on that, getting that content to uh, resonate on new media uh, is, is um, a little bit easier, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we, my first thing is to develop a wonderful piece of creative, of course, a wonderful piece of content, and then we figure out how to put it on the various platforms. Awesome. You know, do you do you alter it? For example, in this the the, the uh, reality series I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, we have the episodes and we have webisodes. Got it. All right. Very smart. All right. So <laughs> we got you know here's what's happening, and then a webisode which may be behind the scenes, awesome. the making of. Awesome. Right. Um, you know, not before scenes and a uh, scene scenes mm -hmm. and uh and so and then we have a we have a mobile component as well okay. so so there is all the various platforms we want to be on and we sort of you know alter it for those platforms awesome in terms of programming or running a media business what do you mm -hmm. think that you observed at mtv that you said that's not the right way to do it, that you've taken in and it's <laughs> proved successful um, in your journey as an entrepreneurship. Right, so you're trying to put me in trouble, aren't you? Uh, mm -hmm. Not trouble, just want to see what you observed and what you were able to take from know, that kind of made this successful over the past three years. Right, I know, it's a great question. Um, because just as I, take, I took original formats and, and sort of learned a lot about just television and quality television, um, you know, there's always uh, something that you can take from something that you know, might not fit mm -hmm. into the culture that you're going into. So for example, we have, uh, you know, a spiritual component to the channel mm -hmm. because Caribbean people are very God-fearing people, right? Absolutely. You know, so you might see them whining in a kind of, whining, you know, moving in a certain <laughs> way in, in carnival. Right. And right after that carnival, they, you know, they were, exactly. <laughs> and quite frankly, during carnival, you're asking the good Lord for a good carnival, you know what I mean? <laughs> So it's one of those things where, so we have, we have quite a bit of spirituality. Dr. Miles Monroe, who's a world-class uh, minister mm -hmm. uh, from the Bahamas. He's, he's on there not just on Sunday, but every single day. We have a show called Rise and Shine, which is about spirituality. We have, the, the channel is built on a number of principles. Again, believing in something bigger than yourself. So we, we believe in God. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, uh, you know, sort of taking care of yourself phys physically. So, you know, remaining healthy, making sure. So we, we launched a product called Temple Water, um, to, right, exactly, to sort of um, to encourage the consumption of, uh, of water because it's, it's a, right, exactly, especially among the, the youth, the, mm -hmm. the children. Um, high incidences of diabetes in the region and, and sort of uh, diseases caused by the intake of sugary substances. What do you think Tempo means to the people of the Caribbean? I mean, you, yeah. you talked about how it has this great uh, mm -hmm. far reach. Yeah. What has it meant to them? What has it brought to that culture? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing for me to say it, but you could certainly hear it from them. Of course. Uh, when, you, when you walk through the region and you ask anyone about Tempo, they, they immediately say a couple of things. They say it gives us pride. It inspires our, uh, uh, the youth of the region. Mm -hmm. um, and above all, it sort of unites us. Um, not sort of, it unites us. So whereas before Temple, everybody in each different island kind of knew what was happening in the United States or in Europe or the Middle East, they hardly knew what was happening in the island that they could see mm. from a certain part of the shore, you know? So, you know, Grenada didn't know what Trinidad was doing, Trinidad didn't know what Aruba was doing, Aruba didn't know what 
Dominica was doing. And what Tempo has now done is sort of bridge that gap, okay. right? It has created virtual bridges between the various islands so that we can see that we have much more in common than difference. Okay. And when you see that, you begin to unite. So whereas there was individual identities, I'm Trinidadian, I am Guyanese, I am, you know, a uh, St. Lucian, there is now this renewed focus on a region where Caribbean people. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And that unites us not just in the Caribbean, but throughout the entire diaspora. Okay. Awesome. And Tempo has had this extraordinary journey since its conception in 2005. Mm -hmm. I want to kind of pick your brain a little bit mm -hmm. and have you complete this sentence. In five years, Tempo Networks will be? Tempo Networks will be in every corner of the globe, certainly that uh, Caribbean people are there or lovers of Caribbean things mm -hmm. are. And that would be everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to every continent, right? We will be on every platform that is currently, that reaches an eyeball. So the new media platform that we discussed. Mm -hmm. We will be ultimately making change um, or continuing to make change such that the region has this quality platform that they can be proud of and that the whole world is seeing the representation of the Caribbean mm -hmm. in a unique and interesting way. And that those tourist arrivals double, you know, that opportunity in the region flourishes, mm -hmm. and that a little child, whether in St. Lucia, Grenada, Dominica, the Virgin Islands, is proud of being Caribbean. And even if they venture away, they keep it in their heart, they spread the joy. And I don't know if we're going to be able to do all of that in five years. Mm -hmm. It might be 10. Right. Uh, but that is the mission we're on. That's the mission. And for more information on Tempo Networks, you can log on to www.tempo.com. And for all African-American business and entrepreneurship news, make sure you check out AtlantaPost.com. I'm Dewan. Thanks so much, Frederick. The pleasure was mine. Yes. Best of luck to you. Thank you.